Hello, everybody. It's Grizzly from Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome back to the show from coast to coast and around the world. This is a very special show today. Not only do we have an announcement to make, but we also have a special guest. And a new PIC, which is a partner in crime, a world renowned, famous psychic, Jeanette. She's backstage. And I think we're going gonna go ahead and, and talk about her announcement. So let's bring her on and introduce her herself. Hey, Jeanette, are you out there? Hey, Grizzly. <laughs> I'm here. Hey, how are you doing today? Good, good, good. How about you? Oh, doing wonderful. Doing wonderful. So introduce yourself to everybody. So hi everyone, um, I'm particularly known for the Casey Anthony case in Florida. If you don't know that case, uh, you'll have to Google Casey Anthony and she's still in the news regarding her poor little toddler and the death of her toddler. I'm also known for the Chandra Levy case in Washington DC. Both were missing people cases. I'm well known for locating missing persons um, in the U.S. and overseas. I additionally am a treasure hunter, and I encourage people to buy the right equipment, get the right partners, and I'm writing a book about treasure hunting. <clears throat> I'm well, oh, known wow. for, well known for the variety of paranormal tasks and projects I work on, from ghosties to missing ob finding missing objects to interviewing, to speaking, and writing various articles and interviewing with the media. That's there interesting. You. So you are a psychic and a medium. I am. So how long have you been that way? So I um, had my first unusual near-death experience at seven, six and seven. And oh, wow. uh, I, th I think that was influential in my perception. And then I had a near death at 27. And that was where everything turned around. And at 27, I became a, a full-time psychic. <clears throat> and I worked on not just missing persons, but I worked on um, finding missing objects. So I've been written up in the Smithsonian Magazine. And I've been written up in Psychology Today for one of my treasure finds, an Al Capone treasure find. Um, I'm written up in the Huffington Post in New York about the variety of psychic things I can do or intuitive things I can do. Plus, I have what's called synesthesia, which synesthesia is an added part of the brain turned on, which only 4% of the world has. And it's very interesting. It gives you colors and numbers and names and it just comes right to the mind. It's almost like you, you're similar to a schizophrenic, but you're not schizophrenic. So it's, it's, uh, it's not just visual, but it's also a hearing. So it's clear audience, but it's in a more extreme clear audience. And um, so there's a woman writing a book, a journalist by the name of Maureen Seberg, and her book is coming out next year on the senses. Uh, and it's coming out in August at Barnes and Noble, I guess. So it's Maureen Seberg, and it's on synesthesia. Uh, the other abilities I have is I'm very well known for my dowsing work, and I promote the American Society of Dowsers because that's where you can learn to use your talents. And also the, the problem we are having in the U.S. right now is a limited amount of water or water location. 
And so dowsers also locate water. So anything to locate, that's their, that's their, I guess you call it a genre or you know, their ability is very, very odd. So we'll stick it in the paranormal, but it's still very odd. You know, it's, it's sort of in its own category. <clears throat> okay. Now when you say dowsing, can you explain to the audience from around the world what dowsing is and what tools you use? Sure, sure. So overseas in Germany, if you become a dowser, which is a profession for them, they can use what's called a, a it, it looks like a, a coat hanger. It's a metal wire and it's shaped in the, in the shape of an L. And they use two of them and they walk along. And when there's a situation they're looking for, the wires open up, which means yes. Now, additionally, they use a fork and stick and they can find water with the fork and stick. And a lot of times it can be an oak tree or a whippoorwill will tree <coughs> stick. Um, but they also locate plumbing problems. So if your plumbing or piping problem breaks, you can find breaks with it. Um, with the L stick or the L rod. Now I tend to use what's called remote dowsing. So remote dowsing is the same thing as working remote from, you know, you work at your home, so that's remote. And then dowsing would be, for example, I work with maps at my home. Uh, for example, I have a case that just came in, a project that is to locate gold out of Mexico. And so I'll do it here, give the information to the client in California, and he flies down to California with his team and finds the gold. Um, I've done work uh, with Saudi Arabia and I've done work with foreign countries to find oil. Um, I have located water for horse farms, uh, for people. <clears throat> it, 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 typically the dowsing stick is, is known for water. You know, that's, that, that's the category, but, uh, but, Fortunately, we've expanded outside the box. We also use it to, we, we use what's called a pendulum. And years ago, women would use a, a penny on a string or a button on a string and try to find out with their, during their pregnancy whether the baby was a, a boy or a girl. And if it went one way, it meant a boy. If it went the other way, it was a girl. <clears throat> went another way, it was twins or more than one, one baby. <clears throat> and that's called pendulum dowsing. So you can use that for anything and everything. For example, I've done some work for the military <clears throat> and we can use remote dowsing and we can pinpoint on a map where a person is missing and they go search the area. Now, if the victim is is deceased for a long period of time, you have to add K9 to the, to the equation. <clears throat> and the K9, for example, I just got a case in out of Washington state and the girl's been missing for two years. So- oh, wow. Yeah. So, and you're you're a former cop, so you know how it goes. The remains right. are be minimal, but a lot of times the animals will come over and and tear the remains apart, going after the bone or going after the clothes or going after the scent, and then you take you take a rescue crew over to a certain radius and they search and hopefully they'll find her remains. That's very interesting. I mean, that's that, that's that's quite a bit. Now, in the, in the ads I put out for us, I put out that we have a special announcement. So I think we're going to hold off on that till the end. Sure, sure. So, so I work like with a lot of people in my field of work. They don't always know the right tools to buy. For example, I tell people, if you're going to be a rescue crew, make a plan. Take a medicine kit. <clears throat> take the snake bite, snake bite kit. Um, the big thing now is we have flashlights that are phenomenal and they can light up the whole area because a lot of rescue teams go out at like four and five o'clock in the afternoon. And by the time six gets here, it's dark and you need the whole area lit up. So your flashlight is totally critical. And there are other times when you're hiking and you need infrared binoculars. So I tell people, get those binoculars, no matter what. This is part of your package for treasure hunting hunting for remains, search and rescue. Um, you have to have the right backpacks, the right clothing, the right team. I mean, sometimes you got to buy rope. Um, and a lot of people go to Dick's. I mean, they have a lot of good stuff. Um, there are other sporting good places that will have the supplies you need. 
but you do have to think out everything you do in the paranormal field. Even the ghost hunters, they have to think everything out. Do we have the flashlights? Do we have our medical kit in case somebody falls and gets hurt? Um, and, and it happens all the time because apparently these ghosties are pushing people all around or clawing people <laughs> and people bleed. Uh, kudos to right. those people, you know. So it's it's a very varied field. It, it can be a lot of fun. I don't do the ghosty cases that are violent or dangerous or where you get clawed. Uh, evil entities that I stay away from those period. Uh, they're too creepy for me. How about you? Would you go on a ghost investigation with an evil entity? You know, I don't, I don't excuse me. I don't know. It's uh, one of those questions to where, you know, I may try, but I don't know if I have the guts to do so, to be honest. <laughs> So you can call yourself you can call yourself a little bit of a chicken in that category, eh? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm not afraid to speak the truth. I'm not either. I mean, I know I know you're a big Bigfoot hunter, but I gotta tell you, I if I was a Bigfoot hunter, I would buy the biggest flashlight, the biggest and the best infrared binoculars. I would buy uh, a horn, you know. And I would buy equipment so that if I had to be found, you know, I, you know, you could, you could flash some kind of light. Hey, I'm right here. Get me out of here. Um, I would buy the best boots to run. <laughs> or tennis Yeah, boots, right. You know, like uh, snake boots. Um, a lot of people don't think there's snakes in the winter, but sometimes they're there, you know. Um, and then I've seen oh, people. Yeah, you're right. You, you know, I've seen people and they, they're on these TV shows and, they do have this, the snake, um, not just the boots, but the wrappings around the leg. And those are terrific. I mean, it, they're not going to get your leg, but, but you do have to protect. You have to have really good snake boots to protect your ankles, toes. And then, like I said, the, the material to, to wrap around your legs saves you a lot of time and, you know, hecticness. I mean, can you imagine you, you get bitten and a helicopter has to come get you? And no. then you're, really, you're not really supposed to move after you get snake bitten. You're supposed to either try to kill the snake and take it to the doctors because <clears throat> you're not sure which snake has just bitten you. <laughs> right, right. You, you got to get that venom from the vet or the hospital. Um, but, it, you know, a lot of people don't realize. I mean, you can also, I, I was thinking the other day, God, if I went Bigfoot hunting, now you tell me, but I would take some survey tape. And I would put a yellow marker on the trees. Hey, this is the path I went into the forest. And then when I turn around, the yellow markers are the path out. Would you do that or you wouldn't do that? I don't know. I think I would. Because, I mean, you know, if you got to run, you got to have a path. <laughs> and you got to say, oh, my God. Uh, let's see, which direction do I go in? There's no question. You see the yellow tape and you run, you take off. I mean, these guys are so big, what, 14 to 18 feet tall. They're going to run faster than you. And if they're in the mood, are they going to carry you off and eat you for dinner? <laughs> well, you know, you know that's, that's actually been proven, you know, documented in history that's actually happened. <clears throat> that's what they say. I think North Carolina has a problem or Tennessee has a problem where they have uh, uh, some kids go missing, like Boy Scouts go uh, camping in the hills, and then a kid goes missing, and people are saying, oh, I see this big guy that looks like an ape or something walking by with a kid. And it, it makes you think, you know, uh, a parent or a person saying they saw that, why wouldn't you respond? Why is this kid over this big monkey's shoulders? Uh, be aware, you know, that's, that's another thing. Oh, and I want to say this bear spray, that is your miracle cure for safety, right? <laughs> Let me tell you something. <clears throat> I got a story on that. I used to own a place of last door and I sold a lot of bear spray and in Indiana, we didn't have bears for some reason. I'm losing my voice. Sorry about that. And I had this guy, he was a foreigner, 
and he was from Louisville, and he would come over two or three times a month, and he would buy four or five bottles, and they were like little fire extinguishers. And finally, after the third time he was buying them, I asked him, I said, sir, what are you doing with this bear spray? <laughs> and he was like, oh, it's very good. He said, I own gas stations. Don't own guns. He oh works very good on crackheads. Oh, my and God. I that is, about lost it. That is excellent. I about lost it. You know. <laughs> well, I, I did ask a friend of mine one time. I said, why don't you use those uh, pellet guns on, on crackheads or people that come in your shop? Because... If you think about it, I mean, the bear spray is terrific, but if you have a pellet gun, not a pellet pellet gun, the ones that are like little balls that you shoot and they're colored balls, you know what I'm talking about? Uh huh. And I said, why can't you shoot people with that kind of stuff? Because then they're marked. They're running out of your gas station and suddenly they, they've got this blue all over them. The cops will know exactly who tried to rob the store. But then the cop told me, well, that that's not good for their civil rights. I said, oh, so it's okay for them to rob the store, but they can't get shot with like a little blue gun. I, I, I'm a little blue pellet thing, <clears throat> color pellet, whatever you want to call it. I just think that would be terrific. I mean, you can't, what are you going to do with a nerd gun? You're, you're going to pop them with this little sponge. I don't think so. Well, you know, and that's the story that, you know, back in, back in the days in Georgia were people were burglarizing homes and and walking on the roof and fall through a what do you call those sky what do you call those really openings in in the roofs of the right and fall through and break the legs <laughs> sue the homeowners and win yeah yeah and i'm like that. you know how in the world you're up there getting ready to break in and you and you fall in and get hurt but you see the home the homeowner and you win. I, I never did understand that. I'm with you. I never did. You. I I think you have to be proactive. I do think that if you don't, if you have a sign up saying no trespassing, oh, you know, owner will shoot you or you have to say a statement. I think that's legal in certain states. I don't know which states, but you need to check out your state and see what you can do. Uh, personally, if I lived in Georgia, which is a beautiful state, um, they do have a high amount of, of, of snakes, and I, I'm curious what kind of snake spray or situation you can, safety situations you can have to protect, protect yourself. But on violations of breaking in, uh, I don't know. I, 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 I think I'd be more prone to have the little bullet thing that marks them, and then also possibly a bear spray. I, I'm a little bit more uh aggressive i mean some women may not be but i would be and uh yeah i mean i definitely throw coffee hot coffee on them and then um but i mean I, that, that that depends on the circumstance i mean it's complicated i mean if you're gonna attack someone who's about to attack you 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 have to think quick you have to yeah, you do. i mean what if it's 6 a.m and you're in bed you gonna you, most you're gonna states have, have the most states have the uh, stand your your ground rule. So, yeah, we don't have that in Virginia yet, to my knowledge. But <laughs> we're looking to move to Florida, and I tell you that that's I I would rather move to a state with sta stand your ground. I think that's excellent. You know, but are they going to turn that around on us and say I'm in your house and I'm going to do stand your ground and I'm going to shoot you or I'm going to point a gun at you and say. I'm standing my ground. Although I'm in your house, I'm standing my ground and I'm going to get away with robbing you. Not I, I'm not sure if that could work. You know, it, it depends on the, the law enforcement office you're dealing with. Yeah, it really does. It really does. And I mean, each state is different, you know, and, and the laws are constantly changing. It's a state versus so-and-so and, -so and you know, it, 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 it's amazing how people could get away from stuff, you know, and win in a court of law and, and get money.
Well, did you, did you, yes, I agree. Did you, um, I never had a problem growing up. I mean, my father was pretty aggressive and he was a Marine. So I do feel like a lot of military out there are going to be armed. They are going to register their gun. They are going to take action. And I, I think maybe they should put a little sign up. Former Marine lives here, former vet, beware. <laughs> I mean, it's a good idea. You know, that's why the flag is folding here because we like our freedoms, you know. <clears throat> but the man at the gas station with the beer spray, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. So back to you with your abilities and stuff. What did you think when you first learned about it? Uh, you, you know, uh, it, it, it almost seemed as if, because it, it, as I learned so young that it was almost just like reading a book, Hey, here's something that's going on in the paranormal and it is quote, quote, paranormal. And my dad had those book series and it, of course you can buy almost any book on the paranormal from ghosty to demon to the time life book series and I used to pick those up and read them thoroughly and, you know, cover to cover. I mean, it just, it made you aware of people and their experiences. And it was good because you could have, you know, volume one through 30 and each book covered a different section. And so at a young age, when I see this, I'm thinking, well, there's the Encyclopedia Britannica and it's got A through Z in life plus animals, plus life, plus environment. And here's this other book series on semi-science. Um, that's what para means. It's, you know, odd science. And a lot of people don't realize that, that it's its its, its own category of science. And so I tell people, you know, get your camera, you know, experience. If, if you want to experience something, join a group. Um, but definitely get a good camera. I mean, I, I'll tell you, I'm very prone to the Kodex, but I tell people when you buy a Kodak, just sidebar here, it's really important to buy, a, when you're in the woods, of course, get the camera that can deal with the cold weather, the snow, the rain. So a waterproof camera is probably one of the best. I mean, have you been with a group that has gone out to investigate and their cameras are waterproof? Yes, I have, and there's been many groups that I have interviewed and spoke with that the, whether it's Bigfoot or Dogman, that somehow the electronics have been uh, interfered with. Yeah. With the creatures. Yeah. And uh, I had a lady, and it was really weird, and uh, she was staying in a hotel out in the woods and it was somewhere out west and her and her girlfriend was just you know spend the weekend or week and as she was leaving the guy at the front desk was like hey ladies just to let you know that it is better season so be very very careful when you leave and be <laughs> aware of your surroundings okay no problem i'll make sure and be aware so they left and, you know, they walked about an hour, hour and a half. And uh, she was like, stop. She told her girlfriend to stop. She's like, what, what, what? She's like, look, they're bears. And her girlfriend turned around and just hauled butt. Well, you're not supposed <laughs> to run from bears. No, well, you're not supposed to. She finally reached into her, her, her purse, took out a camera, and took one picture and put it back in her purse, slowly turned around, and walked at a fast pace away. Well, when she went home, she got her camera, now listen to this, got her camera film developed. Not a digital camera, got her film developed. It was a week later, and she was going through her pictures, and she looked at that picture and started freaking out. And she called her girlfriend and she was like, oh my God. Da, 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 ha, hoo, ha, ha. And her girlfriend thought she was something wrong, that she was having a medical condition, just about to call 911 on her. She was telling her to calm down. She was like, 
what's wrong? She said, it wasn't bears. It was a group of Sasquatches, and, and one of them was a female carrying a baby. So she wrote a book and used that picture on the front and back of her cover, and it was a pretty good, clear picture. Really? And it goes to show, it was one of those old snap and shoot cameras, you know, when we were huh. children. Oh, yeah. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> it, it goes to show that, you know, the older the camera is, well, not the older camera, but film cameras take better pictures. I've you seen know, because time. everybody yeah. said, well, we want a good picture of Bigfoot, you know, and I've got all these trail cams out. Well, if you notice, the trail cams work perfect until something like Sasquatch wa walks in front of it, then you get a blurry picture. And That's I have true. seen some pictures of trail cams where allegedly a Sasquatch would take a stick and wave in front of it back and forth. Because Sasquatch, we think, could pick up infrared and see infrared. There is something very odd going on there. It's all it's all a theory, but it it is very suspicious. I it mean, is. Every time you turn around, you can tell something is there, but it's blurry and you can't get it. So I was always wondering, you got the trail cam. So let's say you buy five trail cams and you put it in the same area where there's a lot of animal activity because you can see the dung and all that stuff. You know, another word for dung ladies is poop, whatever. And right. And, you know, maybe one of the cameras will get the sucker taking the stick and run, you know, waving it up and down. But with five different cameras, you're going to be able to get something. Um, I used to watch a guy on YouTube and he lived in not Winchester, but a little further over Western Virginia. If I'm wrong, it was is near Virginia Tech. And he would have Bigfoot come over and he would leave presents on um, a stump and then they would leave presents back. So he would always leave food and then they would leave weird stuff behind. I mean, honest to God, it was really strange. A couple times um, they obviously found like a toy car and they would put really? it on a stump. Yeah, and it, it was amazing. And you could tell in some of his photography, he would turn their back on them. You could see something in the background. It was so obvious because they were crawling like a kid with a monkey suit on. And he goes, look, they're crawling behind me. He goes, pretend like I'm not here. And, and he somehow, you could see something crawling on the ground. I honest to goodness, it looked like a kid in a monkey suit crawling and following him. I don't know if it was their curiosity, but a lot of times he would put food up for them. Um, but you know, if you think about it, they're so big, they've got to have a lot of food. So, yes. um, but the stump was very, the stump was very helpful in the communication level. Um, now you can buy a table and of course campers, you could always set out, you know, here's another thing you could do is set out a couple of chairs and see what they do with them or set out a tent and see what they do with them. So far to my knowledge, and I know we're getting off track here, you know, if you left a tent out, what would they do? Would they tear up the tent? Would they tear up the chairs? Uh, I mean, what would they do? Some people, I've, I've seen their YouTubes, and the chairs are gone. The tents are gone. Um, but, you know, they find the tent all screwed up in, in the woods, or the chairs just screwed up in the woods, because obviously the ape doesn't know what the heck it is. But I, I've seen it where people have had a tent, a fireplace, and chairs, and they sort of mimic us or try. But this one particular guy had visitors all the time for the Bigfoot. I mean, there was, he, he mowed his 40 acres to a point where there was, a, you know, it was strictly grass and of course crops. And then he was a former vet. And then it was, you know, woods, 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 and more woods. And at a certain point when, when it turned from, from grass to just straight woods, you could see there was something hiding behind the trees and you could see the movements. And these things were big. Except for the kids, they were they were definitely uh, I, I almost want to say monkey like um, because they were always crawling on the ground trying not to be noticed. But it could be their fear factor of humans was a little bit more 
noticeable than the adults. The adults were just so big, they just hid behind the trees. But you, you could see something. So if you go on YouTube, <clears throat> there's a guy, like I said, from, uh, he, he's a former vet, <clears throat> and he, he explains stories really well and his experiences. He, he never had any trouble, but if he got too close to the woods and they didn't want him there, they'd throw stuff at him. <clears throat> so right. sometimes he would leave them bread. And this is what was interesting. They'd even ball up some bread and throw it at him. I mean, it, I don't want to say they were creative, but they did think it through. So they're not stupid. Uh, the rumor is they're dimensional. I really don't know. But if you could take your camera, Polaroid, non-Polaroid, digital, non-digital <clears throat> camera, the little clickers you, you were talking about, uh -huh. I guess the Kodaks, you might be able to get a lot more on, on your footage, you know, like that woman did, <clears throat> which is pretty phen phenomenal. It is. It really is. And one of the things that, that, uh, that I've heard about, too, is that on the trail cameras, they will actually uh, come up to them and look into the camera, and you can right. see an eyeball. And they will yes. rip them off the tree and throw them and toss them. And some guys will tell me it'll take them two or three days to find them because they throw them 40 or 50 yards. Oh, God. All so right. they would have to walk in circles to try to find. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're very, yeah. very intelligent. Very intelligent. Okay. And they're very yeah. curious about people. Yeah. Well, at that point, you'd have to be a metal detectorist and or buried treasure hunter. And you'd have to use your metal detector to find it in the leaves because I've noticed they're so well hidden. They're always around the forest. Um, again, you know, they're hiding in the woods. <laughs> they don't come out except for you've seen a couple of the YouTubes where people are the, the Bigfoots are walking around. Yeah. I mean, you're but, right. I mean, you're uh, absolutely they, they, right. Yeah, they, and, they showed you know, it's, you know, and there's there's a debate on whether they're flesh and blood or they're intermen they're interdimensional or interdimensional creatures. Right. Uh, and my thing is is that you have to have an open mind because there's some uh, Facebook groups and speaking about Facebook groups. Uh, to all the Facebook groups out there, to the admins and moderators, thank you very much for letting me post my show out there. Uh, a lot of love and appreciation uh, goes out to you all. Thank you. Uh, but a lot of them, you know, you have to believe in either your flesh and blood or your interdimensional, and you can't be both. And and my thing is, is that we really don't know because nobody's an expert. No. And no. for what I've heard and interviewed over this mass amount of time, you know, we have a mixture of them. So we, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's really interesting you say that. And uh, just sidebar to this, um, I read an article from the early... Um, Gosh, I would almost say, I don't remember if it was World War One, but in Russia, of course, they were always worried about the Germans coming and different things going on. And the Russians went into a cave and they found a bunch of Bigfoot and they shot them and killed them and they buried them. Now, they don't know which cave it was because they'd go back and dig up the remains. But th that brings up a point. If they're interdimensional, couldn't they just sort of poof, disappear, or maybe they have to go to a certain area to poof, disappear. Um, but of, co of course, this is, I, I mean, it, it's been proven that these army soldiers remember it. Um, these guys are <clears throat> have talked about it, written about it. It was in a Russian newspaper that, oops, you know, um, but they, they thought they were maybe just a bunch of gorillas. But I understand they were like 14 foot high, 16 foot high. And I, I'd almost say it was a whole family. And, uh -huh. um, but we really don't know if they're an animal. You're not really supposed to shoot them. You know, I mean, they're not really hurting anybody at this point. You just have to be cautious when children are out camping 
or when Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, that kind of thing, groups are out camping to stay together and stop being naive about the possibilities of what's out there. <clears throat> right. But the Russians believe in them. I'll, I'll tell you right now that the, the Russians have seen too many of them. Of course, their country is huge and it's also very mountainous and very treed. So they talk about it all the time as if it's standard part of life. The Americans are, I, I don't think we're at 75% believing. I think we're at more 50-50. What do you think? <clears throat> Well, you know, the thing though is, is that the more and more that people come forward and speak about them, it's like the other people that's been holding it in for years, it's like, I'm having the same encounter. I'm having the same issues. So they're coming forward too. And, right, yeah. you know, because they're not being ridiculed and made fun of like they were 10 or 15, 20 years ago. And they're not being as scared or frightened to, to come forward and speak about it. And oh, yeah. the only thing that I can say is, and what's really sad is, and, and knock on wood, which I don't have wood, is that. You know, in my groups and a lot of groups, we don't deal with zero tolerance of drama. So no matter what you post, if you don't like it, scroll on. No emojis at all. Funny emojis, face emojis, laughing emojis or anything. Scroll on. Because what you do when you have that interaction like that, Somebody else is going to see that that's getting ready to come forward and be like, well, hell no, I'm not coming forward. They're making fun and ridicule that person. I'm not, I don't want to do that. So they're changing their mind. So as a community, you know, we're trying to change that perception and more people are coming forward and I mean, saying, you know, I've been seeing these creatures on my farm. Right. For years, you know, my grandfather, you know, has told me for years and I've seen him as a kid. So, and it's really interesting. It really is. It, it is really amazing. So have you had any experiences with other cops that have commented on their experiences with Bigfoot or? No, <clears throat> I really haven't. Now, I talked to a guy that uh, actually uh, lived where I patrolled in, and he has. And uh, I want to talk to him a little more before I put him on the show. Sure. Because uh, he sent me some pictures and some evidence. And, uh, you know, and when people ask me, Grizzly, is this picture real or is this video real? The first thing I always say is, number one, I was not there. And number two, I did not take the video. So, you know, I do not critique or put anybody down and, you know, anything like that. Because, you know, in their mind, they may really think they have something real. And when they come on the show, I do not make fun of anybody or put them down as well. Because I want people to come forward and, and, and be honest. And some people may think they have something real. Or maybe Johnny out in the woods, drunk, in a monkey suit, causing havoc, you know, to the public in the middle of the night, which we don't know, you know, causing these footprints or sightings. So we have to be careful. You know, there's certain things that we look for when it comes to footprints and evidence. So, you know, it, it's... It's a mixture because usually when you see pictures of, you know, Bigfoot, the first thing a lot of people say is, oh, gosh, here comes another blob squab, you know, and, it, and it's because people don't understand when you take a picture with a cell phone, you hit picture and they turn around and move the cell phone. What happens is you get a streak. Right. You have to hold the cell phone still and take the picture, snap, snap, then it goes snap, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it doesn't snap right away. So here you are scared out of your mind because you're seeing something. 
that you've <laughs> never seen before in your life, you and know. They, yeah, may never and, see again. And you're trying to take a picture or a video, and you're trying to run at the same time. So you're going to have stuff like that. Yeah. But my suggestion is, is go to the thrift stores, go to the camera stores, get you an older camera that takes the 35 millimeter, eight millimeter cameras and use those because those are the ones that come out with better pictures. I, I sort of wonder how the Polaroid uh, would work uh, at night if it was like a night camera. I have a guy that called me, um, he's a treasure hunter and he has the fantastic drones he, uh, and I tell every treasure hunter, it's time for drones, all right? I mean, the the psychics out there are good about pinpointing and using a GPS uh, remote uh, viewing technique to pinpoint the area, but those drones can go out before you do and find out that you're in a safe area. <clears throat> anyway, he was home one night and he got uh, a reaction from his uh, camera, you know, the, um, the like the ring camera and he uh, security camera and he went right. over and looked at it and he saw this blob walking down the street honest to god it he said it looked like an alien um one minute it was standing and walking but it was walking sort of semi vertically um so it was standing up but it was leaning and then it went back down on all fours. Then it would stand up and walk a little bit, then go back on all fours. And he was just so stunned and shocked by the whole thing. He, he, he And he has the Polaroid and he has the digital and he has the um, older cameras. And he stood there and he called me, he goes, I was so stupid and shocked. I just didn't take a picture. And I said, well, you dumb dummy, go back and get ready because if they've been there once, they're going to come back again. And right. He's trying to time it that he has it right by the window because he lives, he's on a corner street where one is like a main street and the other one is going to another area. And he said frequently <clears throat> he'll get some kind of reaction from his ring camera, security camera. And, and people get this. I mean, there's certain things you need these days. Like I tell people, a medical kit, a flashlight, security camera got to have all this stuff, you know, bear spray <clears throat> yes. this is part of the new, the new planning process for safety. And so he gets everything by the window and for three, three nights straight, nothing happens. He goes to bed the next night, same thing happens. This thing goes, and he's still standing there shocked. He doesn't get it on camera. And he calls me and he goes, I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. I'm going to say something's wrong with me. I'm just so freaked out by the circumstance i just didn't get the photos and i so so eventually he got some photos and you could hear some weird noise before this alien thing came down <clears throat> the photos aren't that great because they weren't infrared okay that's one of the problems so you need that right. if you're a serious hunter for whatever you're doing you need the infrared on your camera <clears throat> And the second thing was, is that he got a lot of audio. It literally sounded like a UFO right above his area. And you know how the UFOs sound almost like an aluminum emptiness? Like, it's a, it's a very strange, I can't even make yeah. the sound. It, it sounds like somebody's taking a, a, like a frying pan and a cookie sheet and, and sort of clanging them together. And you could hear it. And, and then you, he took pictures and I said, there's definitely something there, but the pictures were not good enough to, or, or transparent enough because it was nighttime. <clears throat> and then eventually you could see something in the street and you're like, what is that? But it was too blurry, you know, so he, right. he needed a better video. <clears throat> so he's upping his camera, uh, digital, 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 digitally, and he's determined to, to show people, Hey, this is what is walking down the street at 3 AM. And he said, it's the only time they go come out at like 3 AM. And he goes, I don't know why three, but nobody's around. It's very quiet. <clears throat> he lives in a neighborhood and he said, but why his street? You know, it's honest to God, it's main street. It's in New Mexico. It's in Albuquerque. <clears throat> and they just walk down the street. I, I don't know if they're looking for stray cats and dogs to eat for, for lunch, <laughs> but <Right. clears throat> he's 
he's uh, <clears throat> he's frustrated by his fear, frustrated by freaking out, and frustrated by his shock. You know, so and also trying to get the right camera to take the right picture. So I tell people, get the right cameras, get several if you have to, because if you take this seriously, you are going to be one of those that gets lucky enough to get it on film. So that that that's what I've been dealing with. Him calling me regularly, it it, it is uh, it's a great phone call when it comes though. I mean, it really is, and and like I tell people, you know, when when they have encounters and people don't want to believe they do because. Well, you have no proof. You, you, you didn't take a picture. Well, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If you never encounter Bigfoot and you accidentally stumble across one, that's the least thing that's going through your mind is take your camera and take a picture. Because the first thing is, is your mind's not able to process what you're seeing because you know that they're not, you're taught that, that they don't exist. Your mind's trying to process what you're watching. You're scared to death. I probably would mess <laughs> my pants and pass out. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So, you know, <laughs> you have to understand that. And you have to be prepared, like you said. And, and honestly, there's people that I interviewed that has PTSD so bad that they won't go back into the woods for hunting or nothing. Well, I tell, they're affected that yeah. bad because of the sighting. It, it, it's very concerning. I, I have kids or college students I know that go hiking. And I said, when you go hiking, you guys keep thinking about, oh, I'm going to wear this great clothing. Did you think about a raincoat? Did you think about an umbrella? Did you think about your flashlight that can go off in a beacon? Because some areas you cannot be found with your phone. Oh, right. it, it, ping there no it doesn't always ping there you know and i, I tell them pre-plan pre-plan make your backpack not only some dry goods but but security and a lot of them are blowing it off and going no i i i'm fine and then a lot of people unfortunately are not aware they're going to run into a serial killer so they need protection like a pistol or the bear spray will get the guy <clears throat> um there was a girl that backpack now unfortunately she did get killed and she was kept alive three weeks and she was trying to get away from this guy and she she finally got him somehow she got him caught i mean her life wasn't it it, it, it i will say for one thing this girl really did do some good um <clears throat> somehow she got cut and she left her blood in the van she left she left she cut off some of her hair left it in the van um <clears throat> Um, so, you know, when the feds went into his van, he didn't notice all these things were in there and she did a really good job, but she did try to get away from him or cut him. I, I can't remember if she cut him. I think she did, but he, um, he was a pretty violent serial killer that hiked just to find victims and he preferred people who were alone and he didn't, uh, have a choice between, male or female. He just, he just wanted to kill. It was just in his head. He just wanted to kill. And, um, so I tell these backpackers, uh, there are people out there that just, th that's their agenda. Um, in Russia, for example, there was a guy, he'd go to the train stations. He was one of, one of Russia's first serial killers and he would go to train stations and find children <clears throat> alone and he would walk them out into the woods and give them food and stuff. And then he would kill them. Of course, he would rape them. I mean, he was pretty mentally deranged. Um, right. But they kept, Russia kept him alive because they realized that this guy could help them catch other serial killers. And I know we're jumping all around, but it's all from hiking and walking and, and so forth. So that's really important to to be aware. I mean, if you're walking in your townhouse neighborhood, yeah, sure, most of the time you're safe. You still need a camera on you. I mean, your phone is not always the most uh, uh, accessible. Um, so you have to look at all the things that, that you're going to need. Like a lot of people walk their dog and don't realize, yeah, you could be hit by a car, thrown in the car and abducted. Um, it, it We have a lot of strange circumstances going on right now. <clears throat> 
it, it's it's rough. It's a rough time. Yeah, it is. And what's really uh, impressive is number one, you're you're world renowned for your research, your psychic abilities, working with uh, agencies and so forth. Uh, and some of the ones in that I, you know, I've been on the hunt for psychics and mediums for going on about three weeks because I'm really curious about the abilities and how they've got them and what they do with them and how they use them. And uh, I asked three psychics out of the blue about the Appalachian Trail, about all these missing people, and they stare at me like, what the hell are you asking me a question for? I mean, I catch them <laughs> off guard. Okay. And and some of them have to have a piece of paper or a notebook, and they doodle. And they concentrate, and, and they tell me that they see mass graves. They see somebody digging hoes. And they tell me it's serial killers that, <laughs> you know, that's causing this. But. And they stop and they look at me and they say some of it's paranormal and they won't elaborate. They just stop. Right. Well, I just did a show recently in Canada and they talked about the 411. And the 411 is where people are hiking and they suddenly disappear. Now, they may be with a group of people and all the people turn around and the guy's gone and he's gone for three days and he's 40 miles away in three days, which is apparently not possible. Um, they're showing up somewhere else. So they call it the 411. I think there's a, a guy that talks about them. Um, they, uh, you know, the government is, is researching it, but they really don't know how it's happening. They don't know if it's a, you know, the, I hate to overuse the word portal, but these are people that are prepared. These are people in groups and suddenly one disappears. Uh, I don't think it's been more than two at once. Um, right now, they have never found any massive graves. Now, if you're in Argentina, they have Macho de Mayo <clears throat> or Chile, and Macho de Mayo is where they have a lot of mass graves and that they have not been found. And I was hired to find those graves. So, and the fear factor on finding those graves and working with the government is still a problem because, of course, foreign countries, they, they want to go find the graves. As I said, we, we, I worked with another psychic and we pinpointed sites and we dragged another woman along with us to, to work on it. And what was interesting is the people that were with the groups, um, Matra de Mayo means mothers of May. And it means that all these people went missing during a certain regime in Argentina and Chile. Um, and what happened was the regime just killed anybody and everybody who, who was against them. Um, and they didn't have to, they could be civilians, they could be military, they could be clergymen, they could be educators. <clears throat> and so all these people went missing and the mothers protested, my kid never came home. And when they say kid, my 40 year old, my 30 year old, my 20 year old, right. they, for example, if you've got 50 protesters, they could, they could abduct them all and they'd kill them all. And they are in mass graves. Now to say there's a mass grave somewhere in the Appalachians, I, I'm i gonna tell you from my experience, I would doubt it. Um, I think what we're talking about here is a grave here and a grave there from various serial killers, but they're getting caught. Here's the good news is just this last two weeks, they caught five different killers. Um, one of them was the torso killer. They just caught him. His DNA, um, they have, remember we talked about this DNA, um, uh -huh. the DNA D or the DNA ED, is that what you called it? Yeah, yes. Okay, well, they caught the, they just caught the torso killer from the, six, I guess, 60s and 70s. They just caught him. And he, and he caught to five cases. He, That's you know, so awesome. It, it's awesome. And he's a dirty blonde guy that looks like you could just walk right up to him. I think if we compared him to you, People would go to him and say, oh, hey, how you doing? And be real friendly with him because he's got hair. You're bald with a beard and you're a former cop. You might smell or feel like a cop. People might not be totally comfortable. With this guy, he looked like your next door neighbor with five kids, you know, uh, having a birthday party, no big deal. But no, he's a serial killer and he cuts you up. And you don't even know if he cuts you up while you're alive or dead. 
but he he did say yes i i killed so that here's one case and here's five other cases i did what the heck <clears throat> his birthday party was cutting people up <laughs> oh wow yeah yeah so that was in the news this past week then they had two or three others i think it was a total of like five um thank god to this program that i think they're in maryland don't quote me but <clears throat> They're going after DNA from the cold cases and they're connecting the dots to other cases where the guys are aligned with several cases. Um, <clears throat> I have a case out of North, North Carolina where there are a couple guys where we're hoping to get their pictures and to show them to a, a woman by the name of Kathy. Kathy was abducted, for example, and she was just walking to the store, got abducted by two guys. They kidnapped her for, I think, two weeks, at least two weeks. And they got so drunk and screwed up, they passed out. <clears throat> and she was taken to a quarry, raped. And I mean, this, this is a regular terrible scenario. And when they passed out, she decided to run for it, even though she had no clothes. They took her clothes. So she had to run to the main road. And we're talking almost a mile. <clears throat> and somebody found her totally naked and she had to go to the hospital and so forth and get home. But she made the mistake of going home and taking a shower and not, you know, doing all oh, the Oh, no. Oh, yeah. One of those. You can't do that, folks. <clears throat> so um, I set her up with some news people. But here's the problem on this particular case. The North Carolina line for where she, where she was, I guess it's a little complicated because the quarry is in one county and the police are in a different county and she lived in a different county. So this case is still on the pending list. It's not a closed case. And then they, they have other women missing for like 20 years that have never been brought forward for case closure. <clears throat> it's just a matter of time before it happens. And hopefully Kathy's not going to die on us, you know, because she's an eyewitness to all the other women that were, were, involved we believe in this abduction they're all murdered kathy just happened to be the one who survived wow yeah it's, it's it's very tragic these guys are not nice people and and women and men both have to be aware of safety <clears throat> you know i mean in the edna you know they use it a lot on bigfoot and they're using a lot on criminal cases, which is really awesome. And now they're, I was told that they're using it to sample air. And that is amazing how far the technology has come. I well, mean, yeah, it really yeah. is. You, you want to hear something I just noticed? I was watching um, a medical show on, this sounds goofy, cleaning your house, you know, because we have COVID and you know, right. practice, practicing safety with COVID and people coming in and out of your house and the safety tools you'll need, like wipes, et cetera, gloves, et cetera, and then disposing of these items. So check this out. Let's say you have a serial killer in your home and he goes to the bathroom. When you flush that toilet, that DNA goes on the toilet and around the toilet and you got the guy, even if it's for a number of years, they showed a slow motion of a camera on a camera of flushing the toilet and all the little particles, almost like a mist comes out. It hits the walls. It hits the toilet. It hits the bowl. It hits everywhere. And yeah. I, I, I just did a show recently and I said, guys, if you're a serial killer, if you've done something wrong, they're coming after you. It's too late. The DNA is going to get better week by week by week. Science has definitely evolved. <clears throat> yeah, it really has. <clears throat> it so really yeah, has. That, that, that's part of that air thing you're talking about. I, I think that a lot of people don't realize that, yeah, when you look into one area for safety, you're looking at another area for D, DNA, ED DNA, and eventually they're going to have like five different types of DNA. Air DNA is excellent. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a brand new department of the government where it's strictly DNA. You know, they have laboratories now that are, they're outsourcing their research and, and all the genetics, 
but they are doing a, an incredible job. I mean, they really are. And it's amazing how, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago, they kept all the, the, the DNA. Well, I rephrase that, not DNA, but the blood samples, the stain clothes, the, the semen and all everything else on crimes because they would hope in the future they would develop the technology to identify, you know, the criminal people that were involved and it actually happened. It, it really is. is. Yeah. And that's, that's amazing that they preserved all that. Right. Well, now that we know that when you flush the toilet, that DNA is sprayed on the wall, I guess they take the same taping and they could take a big piece of tape, put it on the wall and get some DNA from a crime scene. Um, I mean, look at that case in Colorado where somebody, I hate to call him a moron, some young guy who was prejudiced, walked into a gay bar and just shot a bunch of people. I mean, what was the point of that? I mean, I don't know what kind of closure he got from it. He didn't die. He survived it. He's now being uh, charged with not just murder, but hate crime. But, you know, if you think about it, when you're young, you hate somebody. So what? Move on. I mean, package that hate, put it on the wall and move on. I just don't understand the point of, oh, they're gay, so I'm going to kill them. OK, so you killed five people. And there's over millions of gays out there. What what was the, how did that help you, dude? How, how did that right. help you, um, you know, go from step A to B? I mean, it, it didn't make a dent. These people are very united. They're very caring. They're very loving. I would say 99% of the gay people I've ever met are just so nice. And for somebody to walk in there and kill kindness is ridiculous. I <laughs> I mean, they're, they're killing a very special part of the world where they're pretty happy. I mean, they're, they're, you know, most human beings in a relationship are very conflicting, um, whereas gays are just happy-go-lucky, want to find somebody, want to find a relationship, uh, very grateful to find a relationship, more than a, a standard um, male and female relationship. And for him to just, oh, I think I'll wipe out happy it, it, there's no reason for it. <clears throat> I mean, I was reading up on that last week about, oops, he got the hate crime, you think? <clears throat> but we're seeing more of these kids um, in their early 20s having so much anger, so much hate, and their parents are saying, well, he, he you know, we don't believe in gays. Oh, so you're teaching your kid to hate and to go into a loving environment and kill it. Hmm. You know, but you read the Bible. Does that, that doesn't, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know. Well, you know, it's none of our business what people do. No. You know, mind your own business is the way I look <laughs> at it. No. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. I, 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 I wanted to address it because I, I just want younger people to know you're not going to get closure. It's a lifestyle. It's their life. It's not yours. And like you said, mind your own business. Yeah. <clears throat> they're just people walking down the street they have cats they have dogs they eat they clean uh, i mean oh my god uh, i i i think we're going to see more of the media addressing this ridiculousness where these young people are killing people for for no particular reason um it it certainly is um I don't know if it's spontaneous for them or it was a plan. I mean, I do know they're highly armed. Okay. So, oh, you bought a bunch of guns. Wow. <clears throat> I, I mean, I did read up on some of these people and they stopped killing because they realized, oh, this is really gross. It's not like you're what you're, you're a gamer and you're in an, you know, one of those army games and you're, you're playing shoot the bad guy, that kind of thing. <clears throat> There's no blood on gaming. It's, it's fake blood. And I, I don't think they, it, it's almost like a switch has been turned off, turned off and they're numb or they're detached from what's going on. And the reality is when they do it, they, they finally realize, oh my God, I really, 
I did some damage here. <clears throat> I, I, I don't know, even know if, if a therapist could get through to these people that, uh, the, these killers that you just wasted your time and you've now wasted your life because you're going to get life in prison, <clears throat> which is not going to be fun for you because guess what? You're going to be sexually attacked, m most likely, you know. <clears throat> so right. surpri surprise, dude. <laughs> you know, you what know, you don't like, what you don't like, you're going to get. <laughs> well, another thing is, too, is, is that what bothers me the most is that people don't watch or see the warning signs before it happens. Right. That's why I was wondering if it's spontaneous or the dad is fueling it or the mom is fueling it so much that they just finally make the decision after so many guns. Um, I saw a show one time where, uh, or TikTok, where this kid is like, oh, I just got a new gun. And I thought to myself, well, how many guns do you have? Um, and I meant to report one guy on TikTok. He goes, oh my God, I just added another gun an AK to my uh, fortress. And I thought, what, what, why do you need that? This isn't, uh, this isn't the Civil War. This isn't Russia versus America. Um, if something bad oh, like that I was going to happen. Everybody in America should own an AK-47, to be honest. <laughs> no, they don't need it. I mean, uh, <laughs> let's say you were in the jungle and you were going after monsters like Godzilla. I could see it. But, <laughs> but again, they're in their own fantasy world, you know. Let's go get Godzilla. Yeah, okay, sure. So, yeah, so I wanted to address that, that, that you know, these young people just don't realize you're, you're in your parents, uh, your parent, you're being manipulated by your parents to say, yeah, you should get them, you should get them. Uh, if the parents are that aggressive, why don't they go get them? And they're not going to because they know what the circumstance is going to be. You got a consequence called prison. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And and I agree with you on your comment earlier that they learn this from their parents <clears throat> about hatred and prejudice and uh, hate crimes. They, they, they really do. They learn it from them. Well, I, I will, I, you know, I'll, and I'll say this too. When I had my near-death experience, when you go to the other side, because I died, okay, I died, and it is the most um, loving environment. Um, you feel like you're in a vacuum of, I want to say the word love, and now I did not get to meet Jesus. I met God. <clears throat> I met some angels, people in Grecian outfits. I met... Uh, just a variety of people it was super interesting. <clears throat> now I did ask to come back. <clears throat> some people do, some people don't. Um, and I'm just a little nosy or questioning. I'm always like that. And um, you really learn what love is all about. You learn about peace. You learn about um, cohesiveness, I guess you could say. Um, there uh -huh. was no, there was no addressing of, gay or racial or anything like that um i do remember being in a room and uh, you know some of these other relatives from reincarnation were there and but everybody loved everybody it was really it, it was like a atmosphere of not a party but oh welcome home and i'm i'm this person from your past life or that person from a past life and <clears throat> one was japanese one was chinese um it, it, you know, one time I was told I was <clears throat> a female from a black African female war party. And, and I was like, what? And I was tall, very, very tall. And, you know, uh, you meet all these people and it's just history. And it the, apparently years later, <clears throat> I found out that there was a group of women that were tall and black and were in Africa and they were women only and they raised their kids and i didn't see any men in the in the tribe at all and um, um so that tells us that in this life you might be white the next life you might be black the next life you might be gay you just don't know what you're going to be um and i don't know if it's god's plan to help you experience all this but when you have a near death <clears throat> there is no pain there is just love and to kill love is not part of the plan 
so um, so crime is really not necessary. And I wish more people, and I'm glad more people are talking about their near death because they do talk about the love and the essence of love. And it sounds goofy. It's hard to explain, um, but it's very welcoming. It's almost like, oh, uh, one minute you're in your house, the next minute you go out the door and all these people are there for you. And it's, it's very difficult to define. Um, and it's, it's just, uh, it's like going to an event or a convention. <clears throat> there were a lot of people there and everybody is just kind. And I, I think we need to, you know, if there was invisible spit to make people kind, I think that would be really nice, you know, right. or invisible, invisible touch to make people nice. It would be a better world. <clears throat> Right. I mean, you were a cop. How were you treated as a cop? Well, I was treated differently. And, you know, uh, we were in a smaller department than the larger ones. Uh, we didn't have the people that had the phones in their face and cussing us out. And uh, the one time I did have a phone on me, I danced. And the guy freaked out. He didn't know what to do. And he put his <laughs> phone away. And the other officers were laughing. They're like, that was funnier than hell. I'm like, well, what, what else am I supposed to do? And he was, was like, well, it's for my protection. And I'm like, protection from what? Your buddy's drunk. He run from the police. He run from my officer. He got caught. He's drunker than hell. He wouldn't open the door. And we told him, if you don't open the door, we're going to break the glass. We're going to drag him out and arrest him anyway. But we ended up getting him out of the car. And Jeffersonville police was, you know, was backing us up. So, I mean, it's times have changed. They have. I think dancing is definitely going to break... Uh, break the mood and distract people. Um, it, so now, so, you know, now what we have to talk about, you need your new dance shoes. <laughs> yeah, like, right. You hold on, right. I know she's something I got in my car, my new dance shoes. I never, I never did my Facebook because I watched, watched for it, you know. Really? Yeah, they, I never made Facebook. So they didn't use their cameras to, to do a video about you acting silly? No, uh-uh. Oh, I'm shocked. I know, I, right? And it I, was a funny I, dance, too. I mean, it was. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I think I'd have to break out to be a robot or try try the best I could, you know, because I just saw that where uh, on TikTok where a guy was doing robotic dancing for soldiers. <laughs> they, <laughs> did, a, did a high five to uh, thank the soldiers for their service, which was quite nice. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so so all these psychics are talking about the, their skills and what they're doing with it a lot of psychics just do the tarot or they do the readings that kind of thing my life is definitely a little different um the treasure hunting is very big um it's very popular and one thing nice about it is not only do you have the equipment but it's the thrill of the find and it could be you find something stupid like a seashell that is beautiful or you find something that is a coin from Roman era, which we have, <clears throat> or we find a rock that is from American Indians that are, you know, you can tell is carved from time and, and, and still in good shape. Um, I found arrowheads. Um, I found silver bars. Um, I found jewelry. I mean, the list can go on. I mean, but it's, it's nice because you're doing something good. For example, I just read up on a guy on Facebook and he's taking his entire uh, collection. He's getting older, so he's getting in his 80s and he's going to take his entire collection of everything he found in his county and he's donating it to the local museum. Now that's impressive. That's really impressive. And he had equipment from axes, uh, farm equipment, uh, coinage, uh, bullets, you know how the Civil War was. <clears throat> right. Belts, belt buckles. I mean, 
I mean, they, they, he didn't have family. So he's like, well, you know, it's just my wife and I, I think I'll just donate all of it to the museum so people could see what's out here in Farmland USA. And I thought, wow, that's really nice. I mean, I have plans on donating some things myself. Some things I sell, some things I don't. Um, my dad has a few books left. I do sell those. <clears throat> I do uh, have a crystal distributor who I work with and I sell crystals. And of course I sell my time and services, but um, a lot of psychics don't realize that there's so much more out there you can do. If you in time wanna get into treasure hunting, I will tell you the treasure hunters are very happy. Um, they love buying their equipment. They're like little kids. I hate to say this, you know, not against men, but, oh, I've got a better, <laughs> they, always, they always say this, I've got a better piece of equipment than you do, or I've got a better, better medical kit than you do. I mean, oh my God, they love their toys. You know, men are, men are just terrible about it. You know, oh, look, I, <laughs> I, 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 you know, I bought the new sifter, the top, top of the line sifter. Ooh, I'm scared. Right now I tell people again, get the drones, get the drones. It'll make the difference. You know? Yeah. I can't fly a drone unless it flies, you know, basically by itself. I end up crashing them. You do? Well, yeah. I end I, up crashing. Now when it comes to treasure hunting and stuff, I mean, how do you do that? So I'll get calls from all over the United States and the world. And so let's say somebody calls me and they say, I have 30 maps, 30 different cases. <clears throat> so I charge a fee to take a look at each map and see if it's worthy of having something on the property. <clears throat> now, um, so, so I call that the assessment. And um, so I charge like per map, all right? And it depends on how many acres there are per map. And then, so they send me the maps or they come here and we go over the maps and um, <clears throat> they can also buy me for the day, like a block of time. And then what happens, I say, oh, this one. So let's say out of 30, map number three has got some stuff. Then they have to pay me to find it. And I say right here. All right. And now here's the problem. I have 50% of the guys that call me do not have good enough equipment to find some of the goodies that are out there. I mean, some of the goodies, oh, okay. some of the goodies for a hundred years could be three feet deep and their machine only goes four to six inches. I mean, if you're going to be a serious treasure hunter, yeah, granted you got the medical kit, which can have band-aids and stitches and this and that <clears throat> cold compresses. Well, you have to do the same thing with your treasure hunting equipment. You have to buy the stuff that can go two feet. <clears throat> um, for example, I, I'll tell you a treasure story. Um, I, I don't know. I don't think we've discussed it. The one in North Carolina. Did we discuss that one? No, not at all. Okay. So I had a guy call me and he goes, yeah, prove to me that you're good at what you do. And I said, sure. But if you find something, I get it. Or you pay me the commission. So in other words, he pays for my time or he, and he pays for commission. So let's say you pay me a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred to find, go through 20 acres. And then um, if you find a bunch of stuff, so now that's my flat, you know, that would be my like flat fee. You got 20 acres and I try to find stuff and I'll say here, here, and here, or I'll just say just right here. <clears throat> and what happens is I'll say, all right, I want 20% of whatever the find is. So let's say they, you know, have a million dollars in goodies, then they have to give me 20% of that, that find. Um, not bad, but treasure hunters are notable to be greedy. They, they just, every single one where I found a lot of stuff, they've never paid me the commission. That's why I charge right up front because they've paid me for my time and I can't be grumpy about it because you're only good as your word. You know that. Right. You're a <clears throat> right. So a couple of guys come in from North Carolina. They won't tell me where they are. So they're remote. So they're in North Carolina and I'm here in Virginia. <clears throat> And they say, um, here's the map. So I have an unmarked map. I don't know what county. I don't know what town. I don't have any GPS. Typically, that's not the case. <clears throat> the Mexico case, they'll give me the GPS of the house and the acres. <clears throat> and then I have to find the missing gold. On this one, it's 20. <clears throat> and 
so I'll put my hand on the map and sometimes my fingers will feel like a cigarette burn, which is also synesthesia and a reaction to finding gold for me. Uh, another reaction in my body is my teeth will react in a funny way. They'll either vibrate or feel funny. And I'll, I'll pinpoint an area. Now, with this particular North Carolina case that we're starting to talk about, the men were out in the field and I said, I, w where you parked, was there a red utility pole? And they said, yes. They said, how'd you know that? I said, okay, okay I just told you I'm a psychic. What, what do you think we're doing here? <clears throat> so I said, stand at the red pole, take your compass. And here's another thing, get a darn compass get um, rope, get uh, measuring tapes um, to like survey tapes so that you know where you're going and what you're doing. So I said, stand at the pole and put your compass on zero. And I have my compass on zero. And I, I want you to walk 15 feet um, in the direction of 15 degrees. And so you know what a, you know what a degree is on a compass, right? right. Yes, ma'am. So for our for our listeners, it's real simple. You look at your compass, you put it on zero, and you go down to the number 15. All right, they call it degrees, ladies. And what happens is you go to that degree, you stay on zero, but your compass has moved over to 15. So when the compass is at 15, you stay at 15. And I said, walk 15 feet on the 15 degree mark. So you keep walking till 15 feet. I said, stop there and then hunt with a metal detector for five feet. I said, normally it should be smaller, but I'm not there. I have no clue where you're located, but I feel very strongly that's where you need to go. <clears throat> so they went over there and within seven minutes, the, you know, they, they, they had to clear the area, it was the forest. And they said, okay, we got a reaction. They dug <clears throat> within four inches, they found a gold ring. Wow. And, and out of 20 acres, I said, you don't have anything. That was the only thing they found the entire time they hunted for three days. So, wow. blah, blah. you know, so, so I, I love the treasure hunting. I love the caution and the planning. Um, you know, another thing that a lot of people don't take, or you could also take, um, I don't want to say a walking stick. I, I would almost say you can also buy a, um, you know, go one of those cop shops. And now you could tell me if they exist, but a cop shop might have one of those canes that has a weapon in it so that you could protect yourself if you've got a, a mountain lion or, you know, a strange human trying to attack you. You could protect yourself. <clears throat> um, that's uh, something to think about. Yeah, you know, those usually are in specialty shop or flea markets. Flea markets, really? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm a believer. I told my daughter, take my machete. I mean, the only problem is if the guy gets the machete from you, cause you, I tell people drop to the floor, roll and hit him in the leg, hit him in the, the feet with your machete. <laughs> you, yeah. hit him, you hit him in the ankle. What didn't, don't you hit an artery right there in the ankle? Yeah. <clears throat> and, then, and then they can't walk. No, they can't chase you again. Get those great boots or running shoes <laughs> and get help. Um, but, um, so on the North Carolina case, the ring was the only thing they found. And it was from, I believe, 1923 or 1928. It was 1923. <clears throat> and it was probably the farmers, you know, how they're out there doing their pig hunting or, um, farming equipment had to go to the bathroom and then they dropped their, the ring fell off their finger. And so it was sitting there all these years. <clears throat> it was, it was a platinum ring actually got a picture of it, <clears throat> got the, the uh, letter of reference from the guy who found it. And we work on various projects. Um, he's got a project for me in Ohio, which I think is going to be very, very um, lucrative. I think it's going to be good. <clears throat> but anyway, so, so let's say they have a ring. So I coordinate with people, okay, give me the ring or give me a commission on top of the ring. But the provenance for that situation is that it's from the farmer who's already died. So you don't know who it's from. You just know it's from 1923. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, for example, on the Al Capone case, we know that that was an inside robbery. It was from the Department of Treasury. 
we know that um, Al Capone had Frank Nitty uh, hide the goodies and it, <clears throat> he hid it on a farm and it was a, a total of like four to six feet. No, I'm sorry. The first thing was four feet. The cover had to be taken off and then two more feet. That's where the silver bars and whatever else they found there. So that's a total of six feet you're digging. You got to have the right equipment. You don't have the right equipment. You're not going to find that big, the big hit, you know? No, well, you're right. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, it, it's really amazing that you can take a map and, and give a general location or pinpoint something that's worth value. It no, really is. It really is fun. And I'll just say this, you know, we have some great care case work over in the Philippines. We have guys there right now, a mining company called me and they wanted me to find some things. And then what they did was we had the GPS. All right. So everybody, I hope knows what the GPS is that's listening. So we had the GPS, <clears throat> they hired a company. Um, I think it's like $5,000 to check the LIDAR. Um, and LIDAR is, <clears throat> it's like, light radar, something like that. It's almost like an x-ray of the earth. And right. um, what they do is when they x-ray it, it'll tell you if there's a void in the earth and they can actually tell you if it's um, oil, gold, mineral, etc., or nothing. If there's no void, you know what I mean? Like no hole or no, like whenever some stuff is hidden in, in the Philippines, a lot of times it's high quantity. I mean, sometimes it's truckloads of stuff. I mean, general... Mosh, oh, how do you pronounce his name? Yashimoto. He had just incredible amounts of quantity of stuff. And that's why they say there's billions of dollars out there in the Philippines hidden. He stole from anybody and everybody. <clears throat> so, so right now they're trying to find a non booby trap way to get in. So let's say you have a, a, a square that's been planted 30 feet deep and then a, a cave exit. So they know going into the cave is not safe because of booby traps. <clears throat> but so that so you have each side, northwest, south, and so forth. Okay. So the problem is is trying to get into that uh, find, that gold find, without getting killed. Um, so that's where we are now. So they should have been going in. The problem is they are using um, the bulldozers and the farm equipment to carefully go in. Um, so far, I haven't heard any responses about explosions or anything like that. But um, I've, I've had a lot of calls from people from the Philippines. Um, the tragedy is a lot of the people are farmers who have no money. Um, and I hate to say this, even if you do their work, they're not gonna pay you a commission. And the other thing is 50% of them have a little bit of a gambling problem. So they're so shocked by the amount of gold they have. They just go blow it at the casino and their families are left out in the cold. First That's thing, sad. It's really sad. The first thing they should do is go buy everybody a house, have everybody have money set aside for taxes and they don't do it. They don't have a plan. They just get drunk or go to the casino. <clears throat> they had one guy in one night, he spent like uh, about a hundred thousand dollars at the casino with the gold. I mean, wow. And can you imagine the provenance from that gold? It's not worth a hundred thousand. It's worth a lot more. <clears throat> so every, every buried treasure case has, is, is, is complicated. Wow. <clears throat> that, that's something else. It you is. know, when, when, when you work on cases like this, but, you know, and this has been brought up with other psychics and mediums, when you go out in public, are you disturbed by spirits trying to get a hold of you to tell other people things? No. That's good. No, you know, there's two types of psychics. One, in, in my opinion, one that will go out and do their daily life. And there's one that goes out to get the emotion or the energy from people. And they're like, oh my God, I'm so sensitive. I feel this. Okay, shut that down and just do what I call just the facts. Everything's black and white. You go to the store, you get your groceries. Okay, you see somebody, you don't like them, keep getting your groceries. 
You see somebody else, you think they're great, don't talk to them, shut your mouth. Get your groceries, cash out, go to the car. Now there are other psychics. I just want to tell you about yourself. Okay, that is crap. You don't do that. It's just interfering in people's lives. <clears throat> and then that I call the emotional psychics who just have to get the attention. Um, oh, I've got this gift. Well, that's really great and everything, but back off. I mean, that's just, I, I've walked down the street a couple times in DC and they were like, I've got to tell you, I, I see this stuff around you. And I was like, yeah, okay, that's great. Well, thank you. Um, you, you know, you don't have the right to invade in people's lives. And the ghosties and all that stuff, they, they really don't do that unless you open your mind and say, I want to feel anything and everything that's going on as I walk down the street, which is totally stupid. It's, it's a complete waste of time. Um, there are too many fantastic things going on in the world versus I just have to, I just have to talk to this person. You know, if you're doing a TV show, it's different. Like Teresa Caputo walking down the street. Oh, I talked to the dead. Okay, great. No problem. That's a TV show. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize, leave it for the TV or go get a TV show and shut up. <laughs> I know that's terrible on me and judgmental of me, but I just think it's a little overrated where people just have to get attention. I, I just had a call. I'll just say this real quick. I had a call the other day from a friend. And she goes, you haven't been in the news for a while. I was like, I don't have to. I don't go in the news all the time. I don't need high profile all the time. I mean, I'm working on some downed airplanes that will probably put me back out in the news. I'm working on some treasure. It'll put me back out in the news when I'm ready, you know. Um, but, yeah, there are psychics that just have to have the attention. <clears throat> it how how were the psychics that you dealt with? I, 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 they're typically pretty nice people. Some of them just excessively you know, they, they, sensitive. They were pretty nice people. Uh, uh, some of them uh, couldn't shut it off, and they and they couldn't leave home because they were bothered so much by the dead and people trying to get a hold of them and speak to them to get a hold of people in public. They just couldn't get a hold of them or stop them, I should say. That's a bit excessive. So that's a, that's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. I I I think the person might also be deficient in certain vitamins or enzymes. And I I hate to say this. I I I don't know if I believe the whole story. <clears throat> All right. It just it's like saying a cop walks down the street and everybody's a criminal. You know, no, I, I just think that's, it doesn't make sense to me. <clears throat> From my experience, no, that's not what happens. Yeah. And, and see, I don't know. I mean, how can you tell a real from a fake? Um, I'd have to um, interview him and ask him some questions. You know, I mean, there are a lot of good ones out there. They might get one item right out of 10. Um, I've had people read me and they were so funny. Um, one time I was, I went on a ghost tour with a group. It was really nice. And we were in Fredericksburg, Virginia, which is, you know, qu large quantity of civil war and the effects of the civil war and the history. And a woman was there with her tarot cards and she said, let me, you know, our, tr our, our bus broke down. She goes, let me read everybody for fun. And it was fun. I mean, it was just for fun. And she's not one of those where she walks outside and everybody's bothered, all the dead are bothering her. That's ridiculous. <clears throat> and she said, Jeanette, I see you getting murdered. I said, no, I work on murder cases. She goes, what? I said, I work on mur murder cases or homicides. <clears throat> and she goes, but are you sure? Because I see you going here, here, here. I said, no, that's my victims. <laughs> <laughs> so I, that's pretty impressive, you know? I mean, when yeah. I first when I first started out, I would pretend I was the victim to see and look through the victim's eyes. Now I I I use a totally different technique. It's wow. it's it's too emotional to become the victim because, you know, the feelings are not what's important. What's important is what the victim saw, and so I use what I call the cheat sheet: who, what, where, when, how. All right. And typically I'll say, all right, show me, show me, show me. Um, what are you seeing? Who are you seeing? How tall are you seeing? I did a case the other day, which I'm a little mad about myself. 
<clears throat> and I said, the, the person was abducted by a truck driver. Okay, that was correct. And I said, but I see, I know he's a professional truck driver, but I also see a green, blue truck. And stupid me, I should have said the kind of truck the guy drove for. But it was really funny because I kept seeing a variety of trucks. So I knew he was a truck driver. I knew the person was in the truck with him. Um, one minute crying, one minute not crying. And I eventually told the family I thought the victim was deceased, which I had to tell them kindly. I said, I suspect we're looking for a body now or remains. I said, the driver went to the West, but now has turned around and gone somewhere else. And I think the problem is, is that this, this guy got a hold of her <clears throat> and uh, killed her. <clears throat> oh, wow. And, and um, it, it did happen. The guy was a truck driver. And, but the problem was it was a, major carrier so why didn't i see those symbols on the, the side of the truck i probably for uh, forgot to ask show me show me show me what do i see on the side of the truck so it could have happened quick you know so i could have gotten more detail faster right okay. so we've been here almost two hours almost and i got to talk to you to to say we're gonna have to wrap this up shortly <clears throat> so do you want me to give my information out so help to help people reach me if they need to Oh, we're not done. Do you have to go? I do. I My husband just got home for dinner. I do have a life. Yeah. Well, what about our announcement? Okay, go ahead and give the announcement. Let's go. <clears throat> so, Jeanette and I have been talking for some time. And uh, we have come up with uh, doing... Uh, Possibly uh, in the works, our own show, and it's going to be called uh, Grizzly Paranormal and True Crimes. And uh, we're going to be talking about true crimes, treasures, uh, a little bit of paranormal mysteries and uh, the stuff that she does. And would you like to elaborate on that? Sure. We'll be talking about mysteries. We'll be interviewing people. We'll be talking about the tools of the trade. We'll be talking about things that you might need for anything and everything. Your All your various projects, whether it's safety oriented, like a medical kit, or it's binoculars or high tech equipment. We'll talk about all of it. <clears throat> and you know what? I think it's going to be a really good show. <clears throat> We're working on the final details right now and trying to figure out what day to schedule it on. Uh, you know, it's going to be great. Uh, I expect a lot of good things out of it. I really do. I can't wait. I think it's going to be awesome. And, uh, and there's a lot of good things coming up for us that's in the works right now. I really do. So what did you think about the show today, Jeanette? Uh, loved it. We talked about a little bit of everything. And from the, I call it the umbrella, the paranormal, from Bigfoot to, we didn't talk about dog, man. That creeps me out. But we talked about anything and everything. And it, it falls under the category of the umbrella, the paranormal, which I love. And I'm sure our listeners love that too. And they have questions for us. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> and also... We will have the ability to take live calls. So that will be new, too. Sorry, guys, I'm losing my voice today. I don't know why. But once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to be on my show, all you have to do is email me at grizzly. The paranormal at gmail.com. That's grizzly. The paranormal at gmail.com. And uh, we will have a separate email for this group that we will start announcing on our shows. So, from coast to coast and around the world, is that time. Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening. 
and goodbye. Thanks for listening. Bye, Grizzly. Until next time.